Hello and welcome. My name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and in today's video we are going to discuss about the adjustment into a chromatographic conditions as per USP General Chapter 621. We will talk about adjustment in liquid chromatography in isocratic illusion and very specifically we will talk about adjustment in column parameters. So what column parameters can be changed? Now there are five parameters which can be altered as far as column parameters are concerned. But in this video, we will talk about two important parameters. Adjustment in stationary phase and the second one is adjustment in column dimensions, particle size and the length. Let us begin our discussion on to the first point that is the adjustment into a stationary phase. So what is the USP uh, general chapter 621 talks about stationary phase adjustment and here is the point number one. So according to USP general chapter 621, no change of the identity of the substituent is allowed. For example, no replacement of C18 by C8. That means if your monograph talks about C18 column, you cannot replace that C18 column by another column such as C8 for any reason. No change of the identity of the substituent. Now C18 or C8 is the substituent onto the silica surface. So those substituents, we also call them as a uh, stationary phase cannot be changed according to USP 621. Now what is the reason for not allowing this uh, change in the substituent? And uh, let us talk about the reasons. So why no change in the identity of the substituent? And let us talk about these four important points. And this is according to me. There could there could be many another there, there could be few another points also. The first one is the change in substituent can compromise the specificity. The monograph method has developed by choosing a certain stationary phase with the some intention in the mind of achieving the, uh, the required uh, characteristics of the performance and the specificity is one which is very important and according to me if there is a change into the column chemistry your specificity can also get compromised you may have the no uh, interference from the sample matrix with the monograph column but in case if you choose the column of uh, you know of your choice according to your choice you need to understand what is the specificity with the proposed column change and and that, that is completely uncertain right and because of that this chapter does not allow for the change of the stationary phase the second point the change in the stationary phase can change the selectivity now here we are talking about the change into the substituent. The simple change like C18 to C8 may not bring the change in the selectivity. But if you change the substituent from C18 to a polar stationary phase like let us say pentafluorophenyl. Now there is a significant change into the substituent. And this change can certainly alter the order of elution. This change can certainly make the change in the selectivity of your analytes. That means their order of elution can get changed. In the monograph column, you have the elution order of, let us say, pick number one, two, three. The pick number one elutes first, pick number two elutes in the middle, and pick number three elutes at the end. Now, if you change the monograph column by another column and if the order of evolution becomes pick number three first followed by pick number one 
and the peak number two elutes at the end. Now this is called as the change in the selectivity. So the possibility of selectivity change is very high if you change the substituent. The point number three is this change in the substituent can also alter the retention time or relative retention time and even relative response factor or RRF. This change in the substituent can also alter the performance characteristics like resolution, tailing, plate counts, etc. And because of this reason, I think USP has not allowed replacement of any substituent. I hope you understand the point number one. Now when it comes to adjustment in stationary phase, the point number two is no change in chromatographic support is allowed. For example, if the monograph column has talked about the porous silica as a support material, you cannot change the support material to polymeric resin for any reason. So no change in chromatographic support. No change in surface modification. Example, replacement of cyano by amino because this change can completely bring a new perspective into your characteristics of the chromatographic system. And for that reason, no change in the surface modification is also allowed. And the point number four is no change in extent of chemical modification is allowed. So how much is the percentage of the carbon for in case of C18 ligand or C18 column. So you need to keep the extent of chemical modification similar to that of the stationary phase which is proposed in a monograph because this kind of uh, chemical modification also impacts the relevant performance characteristics of the chromatography and these all points are very important. The second point when it comes to liquid chromatography and the column parameters which is the adjustment in column dimensions and very specifically we are going to talk about the adjustment in particle size and the length. And here is the guidance provided by USP General Chapter 621. The particle size and length can be changed such that the ratio of the column length that is L to the particle size that is dp should be between minus 25 percent to plus 50 percent. So the ratio must be maintained in the range of minus 25 to plus 50. Let us understand you know this statement with the help of simple example. And assume that your column length as per monograph by the way is 250 mm and the particle size is 5 micrometer. Now this is the column mentioned in a monograph. So first calculate the ratio of length by particle size that is L by dp. L is 250, dp is 5, ratio becomes 50. Now what is the next important point? You need to calculate the minus 25% and plus 50% percent, percent. So you will get the entire range of the change. So calculate the minus 25 and plus 50 percentage of the L by dp ratio. And here is the calculation. So minus 25% is equal to 50 is your original ratio and 25% is how much? The 25 percentage of 50 becomes 12.5. So 50 minus 12.5 becomes 37.5. Similarly, also calculate the 50% of the L by dp ratio. Now 50 percentage of 50. Why 50? Because L by dp is equal to 50. It becomes 25 and it is plus. So 50 plus 25 becomes 75. So what is your allowed variations into the L by dp ratio from 37.5 to 75. 
the original L by DP ratio is 50. But according to this general chapter, you can have the ratio anywhere between 37.5 to 75. Let us further understand with the help of three different scenarios. In the example number one, <clears throat> if length is kept same, <clears throat> so what is the length of the monograph column? 250 mm. Identify allowable change in the particle size. In the second example, we will talk about if particle size is kept same, that is 5 micrometer, means as per the monograph method, identify the allowable column length. And in the third example, we will talk about if the length of the proposed column is 150 mm. The original length as per monograph is not 150, it is 250 mm. So we are proposing a different length and then identify the allowable particle size. Let us begin our discussion with example number one, where the length is kept constant, same, that is 250 mm, and we need to identify the allowable change in the particle size, that is the dp. So what you have to do first, we need to calculate the L by dp ratio and we know that the L by dp ratio from 37.5 to 75. I hope you remember those calculations. So with the L by dp 37.5, let us understand the particle size. So this is the first equation, L by dp is equal to 37.5 we need to have the length and particle size ratio equal to 37.5. What is the L? L is 250 mm and dp needs to be calculated. So substitute the value of L in the above equation and you will get that the 250 by dp is equal to 37.5. Rearrange the above equation and calculate the dp which found to be 6.7 micron. Now you got the particle size of the column to achieve the L by dp 37.5. Now this is the lower range of the L by dp ratio. What is the highest range of the L by dp or highest value possible? 75, right? So calculate the dp which will yield now a L by dp 75. And here is the equation. L by dp is equal to 75 this time. L is 250 mm. Substitute the value of L in above equation and calculate the dp. dp is equal to 3.3 micrometer. So what is the conclusion at the end? The allowable change in particle size is between 3.3 micrometer to 6.7 micrometer when you are retaining the length of column 250 mm you are allowed to make the change in the particle size between 3.3 to 6.7. Now this change will comply to your condition given into the USP general chapter 621. Let us understand the second example. And in this example, the particle size is kept same, that is 5 micrometer. Same in the sense given into the monograph and you need to understand what could be the possible allowable column length. Let us understand in the same way. Calculate the L which can yield now L by dp 37.5. I hope you remember that the L by dp in our case should be 37.5 to 70. So this is the lower end L by dp is equal to 37.5. So L by dp is equal to 37.5. This is the first equation. Now dp is equal to 5 micron and we need to calculate L. So substitute the value of dp in the above equation. You will find that L is equal to 187.5 millimeter. What is the highest range value of the L by dp? It is 75. And equation becomes now L by dp equal to 75. dp is equal to 5. Substitute the value and you will get L is equal to 375 mm. What is the conclusion over here? The allowable change in column length is between 187.5 mm to 375 uh, mm. 
now this change will still comply the condition given into usp general chapter 621 the third example is going to talk about you are going to change the column length from to 150 mm and you need to identify what is the allowable particle size and the ratio should fall the ratio means for the ratio of length by particle size or l to dp must fall between the range of 37.5 to 75 so calculate the dp dp means particle size calculate the particle size which can l l by dp 37.5 and the same way i calculated over here and i found that the dp is equal to 4 micrometer which is going to give me l by dp ratio 37.5 similarly calculate the dp which can yield l by dp ratio 75 and i found that the dp is equal to 2 micrometer what is the final conclusion the allowable column with 150 mm length must have particle size between 2 micron to 4 micron so this particular change in the column length will be accepted only if the particle size in between 2 micron to 4 micron remember our original column mentioned into a monograph is 250 mm 5 micron so that column can be changed by a column with 150 mm length provided the particle size of the 150 mm column should be either 2 micron to 4 micron so in between this the particle size must be okay so i hope you must have now understood the changes or the adjustment into a two important column parameters the first one we talked about adjustment in a stationary phase and the second important parameter we talk that is the adjustment in column dimensions that is particle size and the length now the pharma growth hub is uh, available for you to learn many such topics with a very simple way in case if you are interested to join the pharma growth hub there is a whatsapp link provided in the description below click on to the whatsapp link and join the pharma growth hub platform thank you so much